Hallelujah. Come on, give me a hand. Thank you, Jesus. Give someone a high five for the goodness of God. Take a seat. Thank you all. Thank you all. When I got five minutes left, Jeremiah, come on back out. So we've been in the Holy Ghost series. Welcome to church tonight, by the way. Somebody say, hey. hey. Somebody say, ho. Oh. All right, we're awake. We've been doing the Holy Ghost. We've been in the Holy Ghost series, talking to the Holy Ghost, learning about the Holy Spirit. And uh, it's been amazing. If you've missed any of the services so far, they've all been connecting. There's a part that they all play. So just to review real quick, this sermon I'm preaching on tonight is the last part of what I was preaching on two weeks ago. So if you missed those sermons, it might not make all the sense in the world to you, but you're going to learn a lot. So this is what I suggest you do. Number one, we proved already, this is some of the things we talked about, that any work that you do apart from the Holy Spirit is unacceptable and rejected by God. He's the down pavement. Because of the Holy Spirit, you get to go to heaven. We proved he's the reason we get fellowship with God. Without the Holy Spirit, God wouldn't even speak to you. We proved that without him, God couldn't work with you. You're too much of a misfit. We got too many issues. If God didn't have someone to work with, his name being the Holy Spirit inside of us, he could not work with you. Number two, these are all in the messages. We proved that the Holy Spirit is the only one with both the access authority and the authority to dispense all of the benefits of Calvary. Your inheritance is dependent upon whether or not you have a friendship with the Holy Ghost. If you don't have friendship with the Holy Spirit, you can't have a friend who's the one who accesses everything Jesus paid for you to have. It is possible to live your entire life where you have a safe full of things that God paid for you, but because you don't have friends with the access, the one who has the key to it, his name is the Holy Spirit, you'll literally go your entire Christian life without experiencing what God wanted for you. We learn and we prove that the Holy Spirit is not authorized to give you anything of your inheritance until you say the password. There's a password. And you got to say it. You can't text the password. You can't email the password. You got to say it. Let the redeemed of the Lord. You're going to have to say it so that you know and you hear it. The Holy Spirit will not let you in until you say and you believe. You have to have a word from God that he lets you pass through to what he's given you. All right? And tonight is the last piece. Are you ready? I want to talk to you about the faith life. Because what the Holy Ghost is looking for is something very specific. He wants to work with you, giving the word. You're going to speak the word God gave you, but this is very important. Hebrews 4.2. Indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. So here's number four. This is what the Holy Ghost is looking for. The word by itself is not enough. It is a word believed in faith that permits full access to what God has promised. So if you just say words like, oh, I remember this scripture that we had from church. Oh, I've memorized this one. I remember the Romans road. Romans 3.23, Romans 9.10. Romans, I, I know John 3.16. Okay, you go up to the Holy Spirit, you say the word, but then he looks inside of you and he says, you don't believe it. You can memorize all that. Do you know people know the Bible? There are people who are unsaved that know the Bible more than a lot of us in here. But it's not changing their life. They don't believe it. It's just another book. Right? It's totally possible to sit in church and have services and and be getting the word that has the power to change you, but if it's not mixed with faith, if you don't actually believe it, then you're just going to do this thing called Christianity for fire insurance, hoping that you go to heaven at the end of all this, you know. Hopefully I'll just survive this, you know, life. You know, this life's tough, and it's crazy, and hopefully I just end up in heaven. That, I'm living for the life up there. That's what I'm doing. Whoa. Jesus said, I don't want you to be living as if you're going to heaven first. I want heaven to come down on earth while you're here. He's saying, I want you to reign in this life. He said, by the promises, we reign in this life. Of course we're going to reign in heaven. 
You're not going to need to. In heaven, you're not depressed. In heaven, you're not sick. You don't need faith in heaven. Let me just say that again. You don't need faith in heaven. <laughs> you, you don't need to, like, press through for a breakthrough in heaven. You're, you're not going to need encouragement from someone in heaven. Right? It's why you're here on earth. you got to exercise these things. You don't want to wait till you get to heaven to experience it. You want to experience it now. You want to get some hit now. You want to have breakthrough now. You want to be free now. In heaven, you can't witness to anybody. They're all saved. The only chance you get to stretch your faith, get out of your comfort zone, and go tell someone about Jesus is now. So this is sad that so many people have the promises in front of them, but they are not getting what is in the safe because they don't believe it. This is sad. 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4 explains this. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. Through our knowledge of him who called us to his own goodness. Listen to this. Through these, he has given us very great and precious promises. So that through them, you may participate in the divine nature. How do we participate in the divine nature? The precious promises of God. It's the promises that are in scripture. It's the word God gives you that through them you get to have what is in the safe. You get to participate on what Jesus paid for on Calvary. But if you don't believe the promises, well, it's for my neighbor, it's for my sister, but, you know, I don't know if it's for me. If you don't believe it for yourself, you cannot participate in the benefits. So why is faith such a big deal? Why does everyone in church keep talking about faith? And why should we want it so bad? You ready? Here's the answer. Hebrews 11.6. It is impossible to please God without it. You should not want faith because you want a bigger ministry than they have. You should not want faith because you want your church to be bigger than the person down the street. You should not want faith so that you can boast that you have more volunteers than they have. You should not want faith so that you can have all the cars and all the houses and all the men. You should not want to use faith and use God like a sugar daddy. You shouldn't want to have faith so that you can compare yourself to anybody. Who cares? You shouldn't be comparing my faith to your faith and he's got this faith and she's got this faith. and we're all, What are you doing? That's not the reason we want faith. We're not, that's a waste of time. Let me just tell you, anytime you compare yourself to anyone else, you're wasting time. Let me tell you why. Because that person's imperfect just like you are. So your standard is already too low. You never want to compare yourself to another person. The only one, the only standard we're trying to live up is the standard of Jesus. It's his life. It's the way he walked. It's the way he talked. There's no man on earth that could sit up here and say, Hey, if you're going to be like me, everything about your life will be black. Are you kidding me? They got problems too. It's we want to be like Jesus. We want to point to Jesus. So the reason we should want faith is because we want to please God. Okay, let, let's look at what the scripture says, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 through 10. This is so good. For we walk by faith and not by. Say it again. We walk by faith and not by. We are confident, yes, well pleased rather, to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. That's why you don't have to be sad when one of your friends who is saved dies. The moment they died, let me tell you, there was no pain. There was no issue. There was none of that that happened. The moment you close your eyes, they look at Jesus. The moment you leave this life, they're in front of Jesus. They're happy. They're up there having a party. Yes, we're going to miss them, but we don't grieve like the world grieves. I've been to Christian funerals, and they're crying like these people were unsaved. I'm like, listen, I understand crying. We're going to miss them. But you're not crying like that. You're like, they're clanging them in, in the casket. We got to pull women off. Ah! Can you imagine that person who's in heaven looking down going, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Seal up my body, please. Please. <laughs> They're not thinking about us, y'all. 
They're up there loving Jesus. They're up there running around. They're healed. If they were sick on earth, they're not sick up there. If they were depressed down here, they're not depressed down here. Man, I'm jealous of them. Paul, remember, Paul actually had a point in his life where he, had, he was debating whether he wanted to go to heaven or stay here. Remember, he said, mm, he said, if I went right now, it would be better for me, but I'm going to choose to stay because it's more benefit for you. In other words, Paul was so in control of death, he wasn't afraid of death. He told death when it had permission to come. He said, he said, you ain't got, he said I could go right now if I wanted to. God would take me if I wanted to let my spirit go. But he's like, I'm going to stay here because y'all need me to teach you a little bit more. <laughs> wow. So why is faith such a big deal? Why should we want it so bad? Because we want to please God. And let's continue on that scripture. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear, listen to this, before the judgment seat of Christ. That each one of us may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Listen, there's going to be a day every single one of you will stand before God. You will not stand there with your wife. You will not stand there with your children. You will stand there alone naked before God. You will not give account for your wife. She'll have to give an account for herself. You're not going to give an account for your son. He's going to have to give an account for himself. And we're all going to know what your faith produced on that day. What your faith did not produce will be evident and what your faith did produce. The only life that pleases God is a faith life. Okay? What is faith and how does the faith work? Why? What kind of faith works? Because there is different types of faith. I'm going to explain it to you. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Let's go there. You ready? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is a substance, and it's an evidence. So it's a substance. This is a substance. That's why I can hit it. That's why I can grab it. This is substance. It's, it's not something ethereal. It's not an idea. It's, I can measure a substance. I can pick up a substance. That's why in the Bible, Jesus calls some people with little faith. He could measure their faith, and others had heart. Do you remember when Peter's walking on the water? And he's, he's doing good. I mean, nobody else can say they walked on water, <laughs> right? So he's like, well, you know, he's doing it. But he starts getting distracted. He's looking at the winds and the waves, right? He takes his eyes off of Jesus. He falls in the water, and what happens? It said Jesus reaches out, pulls him up, and he says, you. You have little faith. But later on, Jesus meets a centurion soldier. And the soldier has a sick servant at his house. And Jesus said, I'm going to go and heal him. He said, no, 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 no. I'm not even worthy for you to come under my roof. He said, just speak the word from where you're standing and he'll be healed. Jesus marvels at his great faith. So there's little faith. There's big faith. We can actually grow our faith. You don't have to settle for the faith you have. Somebody say hallelujah. You don't have to settle, let me say it again, for the faith that you have. Okay, so this is what that means, Hebrews 11, 1. It's the substance. It, this is what the Greek means. Faith is giving substance to what we hope for. It's giving substance to what you're hoped for. Human faith Versus God faith. Do you see there's God faith and then there's human faith? Let me tell you the difference. Human faith is based on what our senses tell us is the reality and what the truth is. It's what we feel. It's, how, it's, it's, it's what we're smelling. It's how we're seeing the world. That's telling us what truth is. Hopes just stay hopes unless by some crazy lucky chance it changes. What we would call a miracle. Have you ever been talking to somebody and say, well, you know. If a miracle doesn't happen, this ain't going to change. I mean, you see that, and you see how this is going, and you see how this is happening. You know, I mean, shh, I'm just in a terrible situation, right? Because they're looking at their outward circumstances, and that is determining what they believe. But Bible faith, faith in God, uses this. This is what it does. It puts its hand into the unseen realm of hope, and it pulls it into the realm of reality. Faith is what turns hopes into realities. One is based on human things, what you're seeing, the senses. The other has nothing to do with the senses. Look at the same scripture in the Amplified. Now, faith is the assurance. Oh, that's a good word. 
the title deed, the confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed. Somebody say guarantee. And the evidence, it's an evidence. Say evidence. When you go to court, if you show up for a court case, the court, and you're going to say your whole case, what's the judge going to ask for? Where's the Where's the evidence? If you come to the court case without evidence, your case is dismissed and you lose every time. But we approach our spiritual battles, the things we need, but we don't come with evidence. We expect to live a life of victory without evidence. You got to understand the devil is a legal expert. The devil is a legal expert. He knows what you're guilty of. He knows exactly every moment you failed. He knows exactly every moment you're ashamed of. He knows exactly every wrong word you said. And he knows exactly when it was, the day it was, the moment it was. And he has evidence of it. But the Bible calls Jesus the advocate. The word advocate is a legal term. It comes from the attorney. So you got to understand, God in the Bible is called the judge. Jesus is your attorney. So if you have the attorney and God is the judge, if you know how to use a little bit of faith, the case is in your favor every single time. Mm. Woo. So human faith is based on the senses. Now, faith is the guarantee, the evidence. Faith comprehends as fact what can only be experienced by the physical senses. Here's number two. Write this down. Same scripture. This is what the Greek said. There's three definitions of the same scripture in the Greek. Isn't that crazy? Number two. Faith means we are confident of what we hope for. Here's the word. Convinced of what we do not see. I'm convinced I'm healed. I'm convinced I got joy. I'm convinced my finances, I have a breakthrough. I'm convinced I'm already out of debt. Well, Gavin, you're just talking crazy now. You're talking like those crazy blab it, grab it, faith people. Well, let's just go a little bit deeper, okay? So faith gives you the assurance that you have what you're hoping for, all right? So Psalm 27.1 is a great example, but look at this. You hope... This is what you would say. You hope you have the strength you need to get through the situation. Lord God, I just hope I have the strength I need. But faith says, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Okay, okay, listen to this one. You hope you will be well enough to keep working and support your family. Your body's sick. I hope I'm going to stay well enough. I hope I'm going to stay well enough. But faith says, by his stripes, I've already been healed. Let me tell you what hope does. The Bible defines hope's place because if you put hope in the wrong place, it's not going to work. You're not going to be getting anything from God because hope does not get what faith gets. Faith and hope are two separate things. This is Romans 8, 24 through 25. Look at this. For in this we hope we are saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? Okay, wait a second. But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Okay. By his stripes, we are already. Now, when was that written? That was written over 2,000 years ago. By, so we already have this thing called healing. You, know, you got to hear. So you don't have to hope for something you already have. The Calvary 2,000 years ago paid for all of the needs that you would ever have. In other words, it's already waiting in the safe. You already have it. Your name is on it. You just have to access it. So you cannot hope for healing. The longer you hope you get healed, the longer you'll stay sick. I cannot tell you how many times I've gone around, prayed for the sick. I go up and I ask. I say, ma'am, are you ready to be healed tonight? I sure hope so. You're not ready to be healed. Hope does not heal your body. Faith does. Okay, let me go deeper. Let me go deeper. We got to get this. Hope is always in the future tense. But faith always pulls what is already available into the now. I'm going to say it again. Hope is always about the future. The Bible says we do have a precious hope that Jesus will return and he's going to come in for his church. How many of y'all are waiting and cannot wait for the day Jesus returns? He's coming back. That is in the future for us, so that is a hope we have. Hope is always future tense. Faith 
always pulls what is already available because of Calvary and brings it into the now. Hope is future. Faith is now. Say that out loud. Hope is future. Faith is Okay. Hope does not get your prayers heard. Hope does not get your body healed. Hope does not call things that aren't as though they were and make them whatever you called it. Only faith does that. You can hope as long as you want to, but hope is not what God's looking for. He does not work with hope. Faith gives substance. Faith is the substance that gives hope substance. It gives you an assurance what you're hoping for you already have. It reaches into the realm of hope and says, I'm not going to hope for it any longer. I have it. But that's not human faith. You see, human faith is limited by this thing called facts. Somebody look at your uh, uh, neighbor and say, tell me the facts. Look at your other neighbor, tell me the facts. Okay, watch this. I'm going to give you a great example of this, okay? This is John 20, 25 through 29. This is Doubting Thomas. Maybe you've heard of him before. They told him, this is the disciples, after they had seen Jesus raised from the dead, we have seen the Lord. But Doubting Thomas replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. I put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side. I'm not going to believe it until I can see it, until I can feel it, until I can smell him. My senses tell me what's real. This is reality. Everything that's truth, I can see. That's what Doubting Thomas says. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus walks through the walls and is standing in front of them. That would have scared the heck out of me. Peace be with you, he says to everyone. And then look at this. Thomas! <laughs> he don't waste no time. He, in other words, when Thomas said that, he thought he was just saying it to the disciples. But Jesus, even though he was miles away, heard it. Jesus hears your thoughts. Did you know that? He hears your deepest thoughts. He hears the conversation you have with yourself. The most important conversation you have in life will not be with another person. It will be the conversation you have with yourself. And he says, he came in and he said, Thomas, put your finger right here. Look at my hand. Put your hand in the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. Thomas says, my Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Jesus says this. You believe just because you saw, but blessed are those who believe without seeing. Oh, see, see, see. You see, there's facts and then there's the truth. The facts and the truth are not the same. I don't know if anybody's ever talked to you about this. I don't know why we don't talk about this. You just accept fact. We have too many Christians accepting the facts. Let me give you a couple examples right here, okay? So facts are totally based on the natural realm. It's what you see that's a fact. It's a fact because the natural world sees it as a fact. Your senses say it as a fact. Yeah, it's a fact. I feel it and I smell it and I see it. So it's a fact. But faith is totally solely based on God's word, what he says. It has nothing to do with what your senses understand or what the natural world calls fact. Let me give you an example. Abraham, great one in the Bible, Romans 4, 18 through 21. Listen carefully. Against all hope. Wait a second. Against hope. Because hope is not the same as faith. Against all hope, Abraham in a hope believed and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him. So shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact. Pause. We're about to hear the facts. Are you ready? Somebody say, tell me the facts. Here we go, Abraham. Here are the facts, buddy. He faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. That's a fact. He's 100 years old, y'all. I don't know about y'all, but you ain't thinking about having kids at 100. You're not thinking about no action, period, at 100. <laughs> you're just, <laughs> if you're still alive at 100, you're just like, yo, just trying to keep the backbone lubricated, moving. Oh. <laughs> It was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old. And he also knew about Sarah. Her womb is dead. So he's like, I'm dead. She's dead. 
Facts. Any doctor he could go to would confirm it. Listen to what I just said. Any doctor he would go to would confirm the fact. But he's not a normal man because Abraham was not a man of facts. He was a man of faith. Oh, so let's, let's hear the difference. Let's hear the difference. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise, but was strengthened in his faith. Whoa. The crazier it got, the more excited he believed. Oh, my God. Strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. You see, what you're supposed to be doing in this season right now before it shows up, you're supposed to be giving God praise before it happens. You're supposed to be giving God glory before it happens. A person of faith does not wait till they feel it. They give God glory now. Being fully persuaded. You see, that's what I'm trying to do. With this sermon, what God's been trying to do your whole life is he's trying to fully persuade you of this fact. God says, I have the power to do what I promise. God is trying to persuade you through this message, through your DG, through the leaders in your life, through everywhere that you're going, through the moments of worship, when he interrupts your day, when he wakes you up in the middle of the night, he's trying to persuade you so that you can believe not that you're awesome, not that you're so great. He's not expecting you to accomplish the supernatural. You're natural, but God does supernatural things. He wants you to be convinced of how great he is. So let's read some facts. The fact is you're depressed. It's a fact. But the truth of God says that joy is already a part of your inheritance and belongs to you now. The fact is you're confused right now. You might be sitting in this place, you're like, I am confused. It's a fact. Okay, okay. But the truth of God says you have the mind of Christ and that counsel is already inside of you like a deep well. And the man or woman of understanding knows how to draw it out, Proverbs 25. So, so let me tell you something about truth. Write this down. Don't, don't miss this. It's imperative you realize this about truth. Truth is a person with a name. Truth is not an idea. The fact that we as Americans, so many of us, believe truth is an idea, even Christians believe truth is an idea, it's just a higher idea. No, 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 no. That's why you can have your truth, and I'll just keep my truth. I'm not going to step on your truth as long as you don't step on my truth. The only reason that we have so many truths is because we still think it's an idea. It's not an idea. Truth is a person with a name. His name is Jesus. Let me, let me prove this to you. Truth is a person with a name. John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So let's listen to this. If Jesus is the only truth, if he is the embodiment of truth, if he is truth walking, when he speaks, it's truth speaking. When he moves, it's truth moving. He is walking truth. So only what Jesus says and does is actually the truth. His opinion is the only truth about me that matters. His truths are the only ones that have the power to change my facts. So, so there's facts, then there's truth. Let me give you a couple examples. Genesis 1-2, do you remember when Jesus is there? God said, the earth was formless and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. Do you remember this? Darkness is there. Now look at what God comes and does. The fact is darkness and void. Light be. The fact is darkness. God speaks light. (laughs) Okay, did you see that? He he approaches the fact and he says, you're going to change to my truth. You got, if you just caught what I just said. How about colors? Think about this. I'll give it really, uh, really. I'm wearing a red shirt from Arrowhead Campus. Shout out to Arrowhead. What's up, y'all? Boom. I'm wearing a red shirt. Now, this is red. I mean, I made sure it was really red. I mean, I don't think anybody's doubting this is red. But if I stood here and I said to all of y'all tonight, I said, listen, um, how much, how do you guys really like my green shirt tonight? Y'all like, unless you're colorblind, you'd be like, yeah, that's great green. You know, but if you're not, if you're not colorblind, you'd be like, what's he talking about? That's not green. That's red. He's lying right now. That's not a green shirt. 
But if God were to walk up and look and have this shirt on and say, don't you love my green shirt? It would turn green on the spot. Matter of fact, would it not just turn green? Listen to this. This will shake you up. It's always been green. That's too deep. We can't go there right now. How about this? How about, this is my favorite one. When people say, I'm not going to fake it. I'm not going to fake it. If I'm depressed, I'm depressed. I'm not going to act happy just for you Christians. You ever heard that right? They come to church. I'm going to be real. I am who I am. I'm not going to fake it for y'all. I ain't no hypocrite. I ain't no actor. You ever met somebody like that? I'm not going to fake it. Well, well, let, let, okay, hold on. What is the definition of fake? Well, if you look at, you could look this up in the, in the Webster's Dictionary, anywhere you are. It means not the truth. So the only time you're actually acting fake is when you're not acting like what Jesus says you are. Whoa! So you're depressed? Stop acting fake! Oh, whoa, whoa. whoa! What? What? You're bound and in bondage? Stop acting like a fake! <laughs> the only time you're a fake is when, see, this is what you're doing. You're putting your facts and your feelings higher than God's truth. And we all do it. But it's time to stop. It's time to live a faith life. It's time to enter in into what God's called you to do. Can somebody say amen? amen? This should change everything about the way we do life. Our counseling of others should change because of this. Our opinions should change. Our emotions should change. Our perspectives on hard situations should change. Our truth should change to God's truth. Our facts can change and should be allowed to change by our truth to believe what God says is the truth. So this is what God's trying to do for every one of us. God is wanting to help you live a life that is not moved by what you see or hear, but is only moved by what God says. John 20, verse 29, I'm going to read this again. Jesus told him, listen to these words again, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Jesus is saying those who believe what the word of God says in spite of what they feel with their physical senses are the ones who are truly blessed. You see, when we believe God's word without seeing anything manifested first in the natural realm, what we are believing God for materializes and becomes reality. Mark eleven twenty three 23 and 24, Jesus is speaking, I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, come on, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea. And it will happen. But you must, listen to this, you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your, somebody say it again, no doubt in your, this is very important. This is very important. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you received it, it will be yours. Pause. Pause. When is the moment that you received it? Was it the moment that you saw it? Or was it the moment you believed and you asked for it? The moment, the moment of receiving, this will change your life. The moment of receiving is not the moment of seeing. The moment of seeing, according to the Bible, is the moment you believed. Tonight, Many of you right now, we're going to pray for your sickness. We're going to believe God's already healed you. And the moment that we believe is the moment I believe you will receive. But do you believe it? You see, people are waiting to see. But blessed are those who believe that God is worthy before you see. You see, there's head faith and heart faith. In a second, I'm going to pray for all of our requests. This is really important. You can doubt something in your head, but still have faith in your heart. Did you know that? And it is what you believe in your heart that makes you receive or not receive from God. It's not what you believe in your head. You see, the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and 10, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your, that he raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with the heart that you believe and are justified. It's with the mouth that you profess and are saved. You see, the heart in the Bible is not a physical organ. 
The heart in the Bible is the center of oneself. It's the core. It's the most deeply rooted belief system that run through your life and guide your life. You see, it's not actually what people say to you alone that actually makes you feel the way you do. That makes you act the way you act. That makes you make the decisions. They said it to me, therefore I'm ter I'm depressed. My life is over. He said this to me. I make the decision because of what they said. No, 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 no. Words alone are not having the power to do that. It's only the words you believed in your heart were true that have the power to change you. Trust in the Lord, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. With all your? Jesus is constantly trying to get your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't depend on your own. Don't look at what's going on in your mind. Psalm 86, 11, Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided. I need an undivided. I don't want to be tossed anymore, God. I don't want to be torn anymore in this thing. I want my faith to produce what you want for me. You gave me this inheritance. I want it, God. James 1, 6 and 7, when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone, undivided. Do not waver. For a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as the waves that are blown and tossed about the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Well, you might be saying, Gavin, how do I know what my heart believes? How do I know if it believes right? I think I believe right. I know a lot of scriptures. Well, Luke 6, 45 gives you the answer. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. An evil person produces evil treasure. Here it is. What you say flows from what is in your heart. I know exactly what's in your heart because I can hear you talk. And this is the last thing. Everybody stand to your feet right now. Number three, this is what faith is all about. It's not just words only. Faith is acting like, here it is, acting like you already have what you're hoping for. You see, faith proves God's word by acting on it. Let me say that again. Faith proves God's word is true by acting on what he says. You see, you got to obey your faith. I don't know if you've ever heard that. God told me, you got to obey your faith, Gavin. Your faith in God is telling you to do something. Don't disobey what your faith is saying to do. You got to obey your faith. God is not going to move on your behalf until you obey what faith is telling you to do about his words. So how do you get faith? Romans 10, 17. That's why I'm going to pray for all of you right now. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Here's my good news. Here's good news for y'all. The Bible says this. Faith comes. If you don't have it, you can get it. Because it still keeps on coming. Everybody from the front to the back, I want to tell you something. You don't have to settle for the faith you have. It keeps coming, and it keeps coming, listen, by hearing the good news of Jesus. You see, however obsessed you are with Jesus, however obsessed you are with Jesus, how much you meditate on Jesus' movements, meditate on Jesus' words, meditate on Jesus' stories, however much you are meditating and loving on Jesus is how big your faith is. It's directly the same. The more you meditate on Jesus, your faith grows. The more you see how powerful he is, your faith grows. The more you see that nobody could stand against him, your faith grows. It's how obsessed are you with Jesus? Mark 5, this is what's about to happen to y'all right now. Woman with the issue of blood, she says this. She heard about stories of Jesus. And so he came to her town, and the Bible says that she thought to herself, if I just touch, if I just touch him, I'm going to be made well. There wasn't a question about it. There wasn't a hope so. If I touch him, because I've heard. How did she get the faith to believe so strongly she would be healed? She heard about Jesus. 
The more you hear about Jesus, that's why you got to turn off the news that's bringing fear and despair. You got to hear about Jesus. Get obsessed with Jesus. Your faith will grow. This is what we're going to do tonight. I want the altar team to come up here quickly, please. Turn that piano up, please, in the house. Turn yourself up, Jeremiah, if you need to. Javon. Listen. I have two calls tonight. One of them I'm going to walk with you in about two minutes. I'm going to walk it through with you. And a miracle is about to happen. The first one, though, let's do this. Do you know Jesus? Let's take care of this right now. You have to put your faith in Jesus in order for your faith to grow. You need the Holy Spirit to come on the inside of you so he can work with you. Because right now by yourself, all God can do is knock on your heart. But once you give your life to him, the Holy Spirit will be inside of you, meaning he has someone to work with. And all the things that seem like a huge problem right now, the crazy issues of your life, God will be with you to help you. But you got to give your life. Right now, I'm going to count one Two, three, if that's you, come up here right now. I want peace with God. Come up right now. I want peace with God. Do not wait. I'm looking everywhere right now. Thank you for coming up right now. Let her out. Let her out. She's coming from the north to the south, all the places in the building. Come right up and get with somebody right now. I want peace with God. Come from the back. Come from the middle. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give my hand. They're still coming. Give my hand. I see them all the way on this aisle over here. Give my hand. We got a whole family coming up over here. This is an answer to somebody's prayers. Come on. Come on. We got a whole family coming up right now. Keep clapping until they're done. Do not stop clapping until they're done. If this was your brother, if this was your mom, if this was your daughter, what would you be doing? Come on now. Look at them. They're coming up. Come receive Jesus. The, the altar is waiting for you. Come on. Bring your past. Bring everything you have. The altar is waiting for you right now. We receive couple more seconds come on come on okay this is what we're gonna do guys right now let's pray if you say you know what I should have been up there it's not too late go ahead and come up here but we're gonna say this prayer now because we need to move to this next prayer let's pray right now everybody out loud dear Lord Jesus I thank you for saving me I repent of my sin I repent of my sin wash me with your blood you said that I could be forgiven. I believe you died on a cross and rose from the dead to save me. I receive you as my savior and I receive you as my boss. Help me become a disciple. Help me go to the next step. Jesus, I receive you. Holy Spirit, come inside of me. Dwell in me richly. I'll never be the same again. I'm no longer guilty. But now, through this prayer, I am being made right with God. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. And God, help me bring heaven on earth. Come on, somebody say amen. Yes. Now, everybody, they're going to stay right here with the prayers. Everybody look at me right here. Everybody look at me right here. They're going to be standing praying with them. Here we go. We're going to take what we call faith walks. For these last few minutes this is what's going to happen. I have seen miracles all over the world by this very thing we're about to do. Now, if you guys could come up to the altar real quick. Come up closer if you can, please, so you can get the aisles a little bit of space. This is very, hey, come on. Hey, we got more people coming up. Come up close. Go ahead. Right here. You got somebody to pray for right here. Come on. Come on. This is great. Now, everybody listen. The rest of the altar team, if you could be by your seats, everybody get as close to the stage as you can. This is very important. I'm going to call out now. This is what's going to happen. The word that you hear and believe is the word the Holy Spirit will work with. So here's what I'm telling you. I am going to call out something. When I call it out, I want you to get out of your seat if it applies to you. And I want you to walk around this building. It's very simple. You will just walk this way right on the front. You'll walk on the outside and go right back to your seat. Now here's the deal. When you are walking... You are agreeing and thanking God that you already have it. This is how you practically do this. You are going to go on a faith walk. This is what I'm believing for you. Many of you, before you get back to your seat, 
will have what you have only hoped for. Because you will know, listen, you will know you're not trying to get something. But Calvary is already paid and you are simply receiving it tonight. Here we go. Every hand lifted, let's get into a posture of faith. Listen carefully. If you need a breakthrough for finances right now, I want you to get out of your seat, begin to walk around this building. One lap, go back to your sleep. Go ahead, one lap, go back to your seat. Right now, get in your closest aisle, begin to walk this way. We're going this way. Come up to the front, walk that way. Start in the back, come around. Hands are lifted. I want you to thank him right now, I have the breakthrough. Come on, according to Proverbs 3, 9 through 10, I speak to you. If you honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops, then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Come on, receive it right now. Tell him, just thank him. Thank him. Breakthroughs are happening right now. It's already been paid for. If you are obeying the principles of God, it is already yours in the spirit. Come on, release it right now. Do not doubt. It's not the time. He's already paid for it. Freedom from addiction. Now, they're going to be continuing their one lap. They're going back to the seat. If you have an addiction right now, whether it's nicotine, whether it's alcohol, I need you to get out in the aisle. Begin walking right now. I need you to be honest. I don't need you to hide this. I need you to be honest. If it's a pornography addiction, get out right now. Put your hands in the air. Walk around. Thank him that he's already broken through on the cross. Thank him that this is the moment. Just receive. Faith takes out of what is unseen and it brings it into the now. Stay right there, Daquan. That's perfect, man, right there. Just a little hit. Psalm 50, verse 15. Call to me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. That's our word tonight. Psalm 50, 15. Call to the Lord right now. Call to the Lord. Say, I'm free. Come on, if you're walking around, I thank you, God, for the freedom of the cross. If you believe it, something's happening in you right now. Don't be dismayed if you're doubting right now. Your faith can grow. Your faith can grow. Just hear more about Jesus. Don't be dismayed. But right now, I want you to reach out and just receive it. Your life is changing in this moment. If you have a restoration you need in a relationship, a restoration you need in a relationship, I want you right now to get out and begin to slowly walk and right now hands are lifted whether it's with your mom your dad your son come on just thank him right now according to ezekiel 36 26 a new heart also i will give you a new spirit i will put within you i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and i will give you a heart of flesh god is working right now come on just say their names as you're walking if it's your brother, say his name. If it's your sister, only God needs to hear it. Only God needs to hear it. This is a sacred walk. This is a faith walk. As your feet are moving, your faith is believing. You're saying, I receive God a breakthrough. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know the way you're going to do it, but I know you're able. I know you're able. I'm going to receive what you already paid for me to have. Come on. Thank you, God, that I'm restored with my mother. Thank you, God, for restoration. My son will come home. We will speak again. Thank you, God, that I will speak to my daughter again. Come on. Freedom. Come on now. Freedom from fear and anxiety. Now, here's the thing. If you're done and you've walked around, you can go get your kids. But listen, freedom from fear and anxiety. If you've been having trouble sleeping, if you've had anxiety attacks, if you've been having fear, get out here and walk. Once you've walked a lap, you're dismissed to go. Pastor Marco's going to be here on Sunday. We're excited to see him again. Once you've taken a lap, you're dismissed to go. But walk this walk of faith. Psalm 34, verse 4, I'm praying over you right now. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all of my fear. Deuteronomy 31, 6, I'm praying this over you right now. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. God is with you. Come on, know that he's working in you right now. Let go of the fear. Let go of the fear. Be strong and courageous. Jesus calls you strong. Jesus does not call you afraid. He is the truth. What he says can change your facts. And here are the last two. I'm praying right now, last two. I want to pray for a healing for your sleep. Healing for your sleep. Proverbs 3, 24, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. 
when you lie down your sleep will be sweet if that's you right now you want a restoration in your sleep begin to walk around do not leave until you've taken one lap don't leave take taking one lap. once you've taken one lap you can go and get your kids pastor marco will be back here on sunday it's going to be amazing we'll continue with holy ghost here's the last one healing for all disease and sickness if you're already in the line put your hands up if you say that's me okay let's go down right here just you playing right now davon Every person who is sick right now, put your hands up. Get out in the aisle if you're not already there. Psalm 103, 2 through 3. Praise the Lord, my soul. Forget not his benefits. you got to be thanking God out loud right now. I can hear people thanking him. Forget not his benefits. He forgives all of your sins. He heals all all of your diseases right now when your hands are up i'm praying for you right now all the way to the back put your hands out all the way up here put your hands out he healed all that he healed it's a statement of fact it's a historical fact jesus already paid for your sickness right now i'm praying for you in the back right now i'm sending the healing word in jesus name go ahead begin testing things if it's your knee that's healing begin moving it if it's your back, I want you to begin bending over right now all over this building. If it's your breathing, breathe in and out. <sighs> Come on. you got to exercise your faith. Faith acts. Obey what your faith is telling you to do. Obey what your faith is telling you to do right now. You're getting touched right now under the power of God. Every person right there among all the other people, I agree with your faith. I agree with your faith. Right now, migraine headaches are going. I see slip discs right now, just being touched. There's a warmth that's in your back right now. Begin moving your back. Begin moving your back right now. If you have swelling in your feet, come on, work on those. Stomp them right now. Begin walking and stomping your feet. Faith acts. Obey your faith. I see people moving right now. This is awesome. Come on, test it. Let me see some people testing it. Yes, let me see some people. If you got arthritis in your hands, begin opening and closing your hands. Come on now. God moves right now. He's moving by you taking authority in faith. You are saying, I receive what Calvary already gave me. Faith does not wait to see before it believes. It believes. Listen, the moment you believe is the moment you receive. Right now. Right now. I'm believing with you. I'm giving you a special prayer of agreement. And I'm believing with you right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we're going to worship God as you finish your lap. I want you to keep on agreeing right now. And you are dismissed. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Make sure you give God some glory and keep on praising Him.